uh, Revelation, mm -hmm. the third chapter. That's a good one. And I want to look at the first six verses. Is that all right? Revelation 3, 1 through 6. And I'm going to think I'm going to read out of the NLT today. Revelation 3, 1 through 6. And it reads, Write this letter to the angel of the church of Sardis. This is a message from the one who has the sevenfold spirit of God and the seven stars. I know all the things you do and that you have a reputation for being alive, but you are dead. Wake up and strengthen what little remains. For right. even what is left is almost dead. I find that your actions do not meet the requirements of my God. Go back to what you heard and believe at first. Hold to it firmly. Repent and turn to me again. And if you don't wake up, I will come to you suddenly, as unexpected as a thief. Yet there are some in the church in Sardis who have not soiled their clothes with evil. They will walk with me in white, for they are worthy. Oh All who are victorious will be clothed in white, and I will never erase their names from the book of life. But I will announce before my Father and his angels that they are mine. Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. My God. Father, we want to thank you again thank for your word. Lord, we pray thank that you will touch tonight. Thank you, Lord. And especially Hallelujah. Lord, help us to hold to what we have. And Lord, we thank you for this relationship. We thank you for the covenant. We thank you for the great salvation that Jesus purchased. And we thank you today. And it's in Jesus' name, your son, we pray. Amen. 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 Strengthen what remains. All right. Let's say that together. Strengthen what, what remains. Remain. I didn't hear somebody over here say it. Let's say it again. Strengthen what, what remains. Remain. Now, as God's people, we go through seasons and times and moments and we've experienced so much on the journey. Yeah. We have ups, we have downs, we have, you know, valleys, we have times, we are mountain times, we have times when it feels like spring, winter's over. Yeah. And you can take your coat and put it away. And, and, and you can feel the breeze on your skin and, and, and the wind blowing through your hair. And then all of a sudden, it starts raining on your parade. And we go through so many different things, even things that try to pull at our hearts. And try to take away our deep, devoted affection for the Lord. And so we, we thank God because he's awesome in all his ways. He's a mighty God. He's an awesome wonder. And so we thank God for this particular uh, chapter in Revelation. And one of the first things that we learn in here is that in this particular six verses, that there is the, 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 the evaluation of the church. All right. And this is, this is something here because in, on every job you get an evaluation. It's true. You know, a yearly, you know, see how I'm doing. You know, and this, this keeps people straight. You know, and so we see here that now the Lord has his spirit writing and saying, hey, you know, I know some things about you and, and I'm going to let you know it. And that's why I thank God, because when the Lord saved me, he helped me to understand that he see everything I do. Yeah. 
He's watching every move. There's nothing from the time I began with the Lord or the time before that the Lord did not see. He right. knows all about me. Amen. So we see here in Revelation 3 that there was the evaluation of the church. And the church here had a reputation. They had a reputation. Yeah. And so he, he said, he said, I know all the things that you do and that you have a reputation for being alive, but you are dead. Mm -hmm. And th this, is, this is something that, that, that you got to understand. You can fake it. The world say fake the phone. You can fake it, but God knows if you're real and you're really hot or if you're cold. And you know, I'm going to be honest with you. I was talking to Elder Bird about this. Momentum is everything. Not just in football, but you can lose momentum. Yeah. It was a time you was lit. On fire we lit. On fire we lit. On fire we lit. You were lit for the law. Okay. Now the fire, the flame is going away. You have a barbecue? How many like barbecue? Raise your hand if you like barbecue. When you have barbecue and you got some good meat and it's seasoned and it's ready to go, you got your sides over here. Now you go out there and let them coals that went out. It's an emergency to get this lit. You know, you hungry and you better get things happening. And so, so you know, you can burn out. You can, your flame can dry out. Your flame can dry out in your love of the Lord. And, and as a result, it has a way of, of trickling down to your giving. Yep. Then you serve. Yep. Then your love walk with us. Then your prayer life, all the other things start falling out. Sometimes we think, well, you know, they don't, you know, you know, the preacher can fall into a, a hard pity. But well, you know, say like, maybe I ain't reaching on that reason. No, they have left God. They have left God and haven't even realized it. And so he said, you think you got a reputation that you are, be, are alive, but you are dead. And so this here, and so this is something I like here, and this you can write this down. Number one, they had a reputation, and number two, this evaluation gave them a reality. Yeah. And, and we need a reality check. Yeah. You know, that's why it's good to have a good wife, and a good wife will tell you, you know, you ain't told me I'm pretty in, in, in two days. <laughs> what, what is the problem? <laughs> You know, sometimes we need a reality check. Sometimes we got to have hard. Do you know that's what communication is about? We got to have hard talks. Amen. Sometimes we got to deal with the hard thing. And sometimes we, we get a little afraid. You know, I just want to get out of the world. But you got you to gotta deal with the hard thing. And that's what's going on here. And this is why it's important to us that the Lord had to straighten this church out. He said, he gave them a reality check. He said, you know what? You, you say you got this reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Wake up and strengthen with a little remain. And so now he gives the, the prescription for the church. He said, wake up or be aroused. You can put that on, on your paper. Be aroused. What does that mean? Be watchful. Pay attention. As, as the people of God, we have to pay attention. One of the things your pastor always says is this, you know, when you look at uh, Sunday, we get to the weekend, and, and you look at Sunday, then you look at Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, shoo! And we're right back to Saturday and Sunday again. You know, so by the time being so rampant, you show sure know that the Lord is soon to return. Just about how fast everything is going. Sometimes you just, I remember 10 years ago, I said, Lord, it's going so fast, I'm going to stop pushing the pause button. You ever watch the movie and say, wait, whoa, 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 I need to go in here, give me some juice or something like that, push the pause here, and it's getting good. Yeah. You know, and so in life, it can speed up so fast where you want to just slow these things down. And this is, this is something good. And so he said, he said, you know, wake up. Be watchful. I love this verse. Look at me at 1 Thessalonians. Let's turn to the fifth chapter of 1 Thessalonians before I get to running too fast. We're going to look at two verses in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. You can write that down. We're going to look at verse 5 and 6. And it says in verse 5, But you aren't in the dark about things, dear brethren and sisters, 
And you won't be surprised when the day of the Lord comes like a thief. For you are all children of the light and of the day. We don't belong to darkness and night. So be on your guard. Not asleep like others. Stay alert and be clear-headed. Stay alert and be clear-headed. And one of the things that I like about, you know, when you're alert and you're clear-headed, you don't have things weighing your mind down. Amen. Because if the Lord come back today, what is that stuff you worry about don't matter? You understand and know that the Lord, he's in control. He's the, he's the gracious provider. He's going to make sure that we have all that we need. And so we're, we're to, the prescription for the church is to be watchful. That means to be alert and awake at all times. You put that right next to me, that on there. Be awake and alert at all times. Also, the prescription of the church is to be renewed. That means he says, strengthen the things that remain. We need renewal. You and I, even me as Pastor B, I need renewal. There's four, four spiritual realities that we need to be strengthened. Number one, in our church membership. Sometimes we need to be strengthened in our membership. Uh, okay, in order to be a member here, you got to believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and accept Him as your personal uh, uh, Savior. You got to uh, be faithful to Him, be faithful to the Word of God, and be faithful to this church. Can you do those things? And so we need to be strengthened in church membership. Sometimes you can dwindle in that. Sometimes you can, you know, uh, you know, I, you know, I ain't coming today. We, you know, I had my ushers, they sent me a text message that they ain't coming. Well, I had to send them a text message back. We need a little better notice of that. All right, Pastor. You know, you knew yesterday you wasn't coming. You know, now if it was on your job, you ain't just going to get him no any your time. I'm preaching this quiet time now. You know, and so, you know, while we're going to do God, you know, we, we got momentum. The church is rolling now, see? We rolling again. We're going to lose momentum? How many of the devil's alive? And so, we need, we need to be, we need to strengthen, you know, these spiritual, uh, four spiritualities, re, uh, realities, excuse me, I'm going fast, need to be strengthened, which is number one, church membership. What's two? Prayer. We need to be, we need to be strengthened in our prayer life. We need to, you know, you know, when your kids cut up, we need to pray about it. Pray about You know, that, that you know, like I, I seen my brother's mom today, and she's mad at my brother about something. Guess what? She's like, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna, we need to pray for him. Amen. Pray for the boy. You know, talk to God on behalf of your mama talk to God on, about you, honey. Matter of fact, I talk to God about you. <laughs> you know, a lot of times we don't, a lot of times people forget to pray. You know, we want to whoop, you know, but when you get home, I'm going to you know, we want to do all this. We need to talk to God. We need God to touch that person. They're not robots. That's good, man. All right, let's look here. Not only is that we need to be strengthened uh, in our church membership and in prayer, but in evangelism. All right. You know, we, we got to awake. You know, I had a dear friend of mine I talked to last night. The Lord just put him and another one of my friends on my mind just to call them. And I'm just going to be honest with you. You know, I, I'm living on assignment. When the Lord gave me that message for y'all, I've got it. I bought into that too, okay? <laughs> and, you know, I really, and I thought you real, I really wanted to, you know, tell them, man, you know, you know, I'm telling him about Jesus really bad. But the Lord said, hold up, swole up. Take it easy. Wait a minute. You know, don't just pour Jesus on people. Wait for your opportunity. You have to be led of the Holy Ghost. And I, I mean, I was ready to, you know, I was ready to go. You know, I, I mean, I was fired up. I was happy. I was excited. I, I, he showed me and sent me some pictures of him and his son and his family. And I'm like, man, it's been a long time. You know, and so evangelism, you can get to a place where they, man, what you been up to? Oh, nothing. You know, the church, y'all done had a whole revival. Y'all done, you know, had a, a marriage conference. Y'all done had a, a take the beast in the streets. Y'all done had all this stuff. And you ain't 
ain't gonna say nothing about what you did. Mm -hmm. And so we can lose our witness. That can begin to uh, uh, become weak. And so we need to strengthen in, in evangelism. Also, in discipleship. Make a disciple. What did the man say? Get you a hit list. Yep. I ain't even gonna ask how many people got a hit list. I ain't even gonna even do that up in this church today. <laughs> I ain't, even gonna, I ain't even gonna even say who heard the, the, the apostle say get a hit list. Who's on your hit list? I ain't even gonna ask you, bro. I ain't gonna ask you, Keith. I'm not gonna ask you, Kathy. I'm gonna leave that up. You know, we need to be strengthened in this life. What else do we need to do? Oh, we also need to remember. We need to remember. What do we need to remember? Let's look at Romans 3. You know this verse by heart. Verse 23. But everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's gracious standard. And so we have to remember what God has done. We was lost. We were without relationship. We were bound. We was in darkness. We were in our sin. And in the fifth chapter of Romans, verse 12, it says, When Adam sinned, sin entered the world. Adam sinned, brought death. So death spread to everyone, for everyone sinned. And so, you know, we got to remember that we were born into sin. We got to remember what the Lord Jesus Christ done for us. It's easy for that to become a blur. But that's become a vapor in our thought life and in our processes. And so it's important for us to strengthen that. And we strengthen that through these things. The strengthening. Also, not only do we strengthen it through remembering, but we also strengthen it through repenting. I love this. He said, you know, hold fast. I like that there in Revelation. He said, he said, uh, go back to what you heard and believed at first and hold firmly to it. Repent and turn to me again. I love this here because when, when you start thinking about um, uh, as a church and when you start uh, 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 holding fast, when you repent, you hold fast, you know, this means you got to change your mind. You got to change your mind about certain things. I was talking to one of my friends and he was using that word pimp that I talked about Sunday, but he used it yesterday. And I said, man, that's an ugly word. You want to use another word than pimp. Yeah. And you know, he said, you know what, you were right about that word pimp. I do think about that. I don't need to that over my life. I said, that's right. And so, so, so these are things that we must, we must denounce things. You know, one of the ladies prayed about the, the gossip and things that come against the, the leaders of the church and, and come against a whole lot of stuff and, and all these different things. Man, we, we need to denounce that stuff. Yeah. I remember we were playing basketball and a dude was talking about me like a, oh man, like a white mouth mule. He talked bad about me. And one of the brothers told him, man, I'm not very sitting here to let you talk about my past. <laughs> and it curved it. Cause I'm glad he heard because you know, I, you know, sometimes Moses and Peter and all them jumps at me, and I had to really, I, you know, like she, she sung, I need just a little more Jesus, you know. And so I thank God that He had enough, to, you know, you know, to critique that, you know. And you know, sometimes people be mad at you, oh, yeah. and I'm like, hey, listen, I'm God's home to serve. I've been anointed to serve. My anointing is not so I can be this and that, but to serve and do the will of God in my life. And so this is something that, that happens to us as we're on the battlefield. You know, all those who desire to live God in Christ Jesus shall suffer what? Persecution. Persecution. All right, so we've seen the two things. You know, we've seen the evaluation. We've seen the prescription. Now the ultimatum to the church. He said, if you don't watch, I will come like what? A thief. A thief, when he stole your cassette tech, cassette deck, or your pullout, he didn't let you know he was coming to get your pullout. All of a sudden, your door is open, window busted, and you don't have a radio. And so he said, you know, if you want to watch, I'll come up on you like a thief. I love Isaiah chapter 66, verse 4. This is powerful. He says in verse 4, Isaiah 66, verse 4, I will send them great troubles. All the things they feared 
For when I called, they did not answer. When I spoke, they did not listen. They deliberately sinned before my very eyes and chose to do what they know I despise. See, you know, I looked at that, and I'm like, whoo. You know, and this is, this is something here. You know, God gives warning. I'm so grateful that I'm saved. I'm so glad that I know the Lord. I'm so glad that my whole life ain't in a cup. Some folks going to drink no matter what. You can see it. You can, you can tell what type of life they live in by what's in the cup. Right. There's something about that cup. <laughs> you know, then that stand with the cup. You know, right. I've been there and done that. You know, and so I, I, I say that to you because, you know, one thing about when you're drinking alcohol, mm -hmm. you're not sharp and clear minded. You know, folks will make Google eyes at you that wouldn't know if they did that. <laughs> you know, things happen when you drink alcohol. That's real. You know, and so that's why it's important that you and I strengthen what remains. Because during this pandemic, people won't normalcy so bad, they'll backslide. Yeah. They won't even know it. They're doing things that they said and pledged that they were never going to do again. That's what he said in Isaiah. They doing things that they know that I didn't want them to do. Right. And see, this is something that, you know, we have to be careful of. It's called presumptuous sin. And so he said, if you know what, I will come like a thief. And so this is a, 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 an indication or an exhortation for us to abide in the Lord's word at all times. I love the word of God. I try not to leave without, I make time. I wish I could make a whole hour. But I got to have me at least 20, 30 minutes where I can just listen to what God might be saying. That's it. I need to sit in a spot and I need to have things that I look at and read that can get my spirit right for the day. You know, and then I, sometimes it's old flesh, you know, I get in that shower and I don't even say nothing to the Lord. I have to put myself in check. Well, you better talk to the Lord around here. That's it. You need to start talking to the Lord. You try to do it on your own. You try to do it on your own. And so I have to be careful of that because you look around, you, you are saved in, you can have a reputation for that, but God knows the hidden things in you. He knows the secret things in you. He knows the things that you are involved in that don't nobody see but you and him. And so God is warning us. He said, you know, we got the, we, there's an ultimatum. If you don't watch, I'm going to come on you unexpectedly. And see, that's why it's important for the saints you know, just don't stop praying. Don't stop fasting. Don't stop, you know, you know, uh, fellowshipping. Don't look down on fellowship. Don't look down on each other. Don't, don't, you know, don't get to a place where you don't value each other. I value my relationship with my brothers and sisters in the law. I value it. I cherish it because we could be lost and and, and in sin. We could be crazy, blind, crippled, and crazy. We can we can be around here, you know, just. You know, uh, I was talking to my uncle, and he was telling me about, he said, man, nephew, you, you, you know, I know you be at home in the bed, but I work now. I get out, and I go down, they got a club over there, it said it'd be cars on both sides of the street, like it ain't even a, a COVID-19. Mm -hmm. I said, man, he said, yeah, man, and, and, the, and, the, and he's single, and the girls don't fear God no more. Wow. I said, man, what you gonna do with a woman that don't fear the Lord? That's what Potiphar's wife was. She didn't fear the Lord. That woman had everything. This was a queen. She had outfits, she had money, she had style and swag. She had a man that loved her, was devoted to her, and she wanted another man. Straight in the flesh. And so, so this is an example of how we can be. We can have everything. And so I said, man, you better get up out of there, get away from there, run. You might ride down that street, man, and see something and want to hit a block. <laughs> you know, you're going to you gotta cocoon yourself. Stop looking for a woman. Yeah. And let the Lord lead you in that direction. When you surrender, that's when he takes over. Yeah. But as long as you got it, he's like, you got it, go ahead. Right. I had kids, and I said, let me tell you, no, I got it. I sit there and watch, man, hey, man, hey, man, hey, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> you waste a whole bunch of time. <laughs> and so, so this is what we need to do. We need to 
stay with God, when we stick with God, we need to have a, a deeper desire. And that comes through prayer too. We need to ask God, Lord, you know, I, you know, I ain't hungry and thirsty. That's right. I don't want to watch, you know, uh, the, the Christian message now. I want to, I want to see what, you know, love and basketball, love and this and all this new stuff. I don't want that no more. My, my flame is out. Good and so we had to cry out and ask God, Lord, I need you to restore. Yeah. Restore what was lost. This is what strengthened what, what remains is, is all about. Now, this is my favorite part. I'm getting down to the last part of it. And I love this part of this message because the fourth thing is if we're going to uh, uh, be strengthened, he gives an exhortation uh, to the he gives an exhortation to the to the church. First of all, he talks about a remnant. And so he said, when you look in Revelation, he said, wait a minute. He said, well, look for this. He said, look. He said, yet there are some in the church of Sardis who have not soiled their clothes with evil. Yeah. Oh, man. That, you know, that just showed that everybody ain't out here tripping. Every church is not really with a bad motive. There's some people that's really doing it right. And so he brought up, he said, they have not. He said, listen, there's remnant. He said, look at this. He said, there's some in the church who have not sought their clothes with evil. They will walk with me in white. Yeah. Now, this is, this is something that here, I was like, man. I just got through getting a word from the Lord talking about his precious remnant. Mm -hmm. I want to be with the remnant of God. Father, he said they have not soiled their stuff. And this is this is what's so good about God. That's what one of the things I learned from Brother Hawkins. He said God wants honesty and transparency. Yeah. I said, man, I like that, Brother Hawkins. Yeah. You know. That's what God wants. When you honest, when you when you when you say, "Hey, listen, you know, I'm struggling. Yeah, right. I'm in sin and I'm struggling." Yeah. When I got saved as a Christian and I had, I was struggling because I had my girl and I'm like, "Man, this is not right how we living." And I said, "I was in the fight. I'm gonna have to get married here." Mm -hmm. But I was honest. I was like, "Man, I got to get right." Mm -hmm. You know, and I fought, fought, fought me and her, and we got it together, and we we got some time under our belt. Right. You know, but I learned from that is that you got to be real. What that song you say, big God wants somebody that's real. You know, <laughs> saved and sanctified, Holy Ghost feel. You know, He wants somebody real. You got to be real. You got to be honest that's with the Lord. You got to be, you got to be honest with your friends and brothers in the Lord. You gotta love, like, you know, y'all, man. I get so angry today, man. I need prayer. I need prayer. You know, I need prayer. You know, I, I you know, I, now I thought about it, you know, I might have could have handled it a little differently. Okay. You know, but, you know, man, I was just so mad. You know, I need this. And, you know, let's, you know, let's pray. Yeah. Let's ask God, you know, let's, let's talk about it, you know, let's work together. He said, you know, confess your fault one to another and you will be healed. Is what the Bible says. But we didn't got to a place where we just stuff and stuff. You know, and then now our consciousness began, began, began to be seated. Because we doing stuff and we just going on anyway without the God of the home. No. You got to deal with that. You have you have misrepresented your law. You know, that's like my grandson. He tells grandma, she's getting on him, or I get on him. He's like, I'm sorry. That ain't it. <laughs> It don't stop it. Yeah, I'm glad you saw it. But he got a consequence coming from that. That's good. And so that, that's how the Lord, when we represent him, he wants us to be sorrowful, but he wants us to be sorrowful enough to say, I'm not going to do that. Right. Don't go and do the same thing. Don't continue in that. That's why he said, when you practice lawlessness, see, when you make it a practice, he even tells us about even with people who practice certain sins. You know, when people make that day practice, we're supposed to step back from that. Oh, wow. That's so you know, we got to step back. You know, if you practice in that, then I don't want to be connected to you because that's what you are practicing. You this, this is something, man. And so he, he, he talks about there are some who he said, they will walk with me in white for they are worthy. 
And so I just want to thank God that there is going to be a remnant. Yeah. They are worthy because they have held on to faith. And that's what they are people who uh, have held on to faith. They are worthy because of that. And also, they're victorious. And, and they're victorious because what is the Lord going to do? He said, you know, all who are victorious will be clothed in white. And I will never erase their name from the book of life. But I will announce before my father and his angels that they are mine. Oh, we all the sin. I think about all the sin I've committed. I'm talking about me. Every lie, every uh, unrighteous thought, every deed, everything I touch, every time I stole, every time I was slick and schemed, every sin that I've done that only God Almighty knows about. He said, He's with me. He's mine. Hallelujah. I mean, that's enough to make you say, man, whatever I was into before I came to church today, that did it. Yeah. That did it. That's it. If God got a people that's a remnant that's going to be with him and that's going to be there's, there's a people that's going to walk in white, I like white. I just don't like white in this world because I put on white and somebody's going to run up on me and get me done. <laughs> I love a white shirt, white teacher. I love white. I even like white shoes, but I don't fool with it because somehow I know they're gonna get dirty. You know? And so but but you know, you know, he said we're gonna walk in white. Yes. That white symbolized purity. Yes, awesome. You know, we're gonna walk with him. And so this is an exhortation to us all that you and I must strengthen what remains. Don't let it get weak. Don't let your relationship grow weak. Don't let your walk become stale and stagnant. But let it flourish and let God get the glory for your life. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Come on, let's stand to our feet.